we put out a, a, a call to tested uh, to tested members mm -hmm. uh, for questions. Uh, yeah. Can you even describe what your first uh, Josh MM? Okay. Asks, can you even describe what was your first spacewalk like when you found yourself finally out there after all of that preparation? Was it mm -hmm. what you expected? Did you feel vertigo or anything you weren't expecting? Um, I didn't feel any vertigo. Uh, by the time you, we, we on the shuttle, uh, we didn't do anything major until day three because they wanted any, any nausea or vertigo you might have is kind of gone by day three. So we didn't do rendezvous. Uh, rendezvous was on day three. And, and it's impossible to know how four. someone's going to do. Yeah, but yeah, it is hard to know. Um, usually, my, my first flight, I threw up on my first day. My uh, my second flight, I was fine the whole time. So I, I think your brain kind of remembers. All right. It's like if you get another, you should get another youth, uh, ride. They only take one you, civilian every two years. Yeah, so why don't you do that again in two years? Because <laughs> I bet you'll find that your whatever your body brain, yeah, you'll yeah. remember a lot of this stuff. Uh, it'll feel more natural to you. And, the most uh, throwing up I've ever done is in the back of a Blue Angels jet. Okay, that, I, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, no, yeah, was, so, but that, you want another one of those rides, I bet you'll be fine. Ah, your brain kind of remembers what, ha, it, it adapts. It's a, it's a conflict of your senses that leads to vertigo. So I didn't feel any of that. That, had, that was over with. Um, but what's it? Uh, yeah, what was your first space log? Was oh, okay, it what right. you expected? Yeah, so none of that stuff. Well, how, I, I really wasn't sure what to expect because the way I used to think of this, the spacewalk was is for us as as a you know for us as an astronaut, this was a this was a big event you know right. getting out on a spacewalk on Hubble that's a big deal that's like playing in a World Series or a Super Bowl or something like that. But I've never been on a field before. You know it's like walking into the Super Bowl and I mean, you know, this is what a football field looks yeah. like. So that's what I felt like that we had simulated it underwater. Thousands of hours. Thousands, a lot of time underwater and in simulators and all kinds of ways virtual reality to get us ready and you piece all those things together. And so you I, understand the order of operations at a deep level. Yes, and you, you, I was really well prepared. Again, going back to I really didn't think that I was maybe, but I really was. I was well trained, and they wouldn't let me go if I wasn't. Yeah. The truth of it was, <laughs> they would oh well, kind of come up with some excuse to get me out of there. But, but I was I was ready to go, even though I didn't quite believe it. But once I got out there, the first reaction, you know, was like I remember waiting as they close the, the door of the airlock on the, on the other side, and then they depress. So you have a closed door here to space. Right. And then they close this door, and they lock you in. And then they start the depress operation, and eventually you go down to vacuum. And I, but I just kind of... And that going down to the vacuum, the suit's the properties suit, Yeah, the suit, uh, the suit still feels the same. It's pressurized, just right. like it was oh, okay. previously. So the, the, what you'll notice is like you're moving... Now, in the water, for example, the, the, it's actually easier, I think, to spacewalk in the water. Some people would complain because things are heavier and gravity, but it stabilizes you. Oh. You're more stable in the water. In space, you've got to be, I think, a lot more careful because if you would behave the same way, a little bit of push is going to send you flying. Because every, so act, really every action has an equal and opposite the reaction. First, the first few minutes of a spacewalk are ded would dedicate, and I think they still probably do something like this, it's a translation adaptation, which means 10, 10 minutes to understand what it's like to move around out there near the airlock. You get to do a little like test, a test run of everything to see how you feel. Um, that sounds but, thrilling. But I remember, it's cool. <laughs> I remember looking, uh, and you also get your picture taken. Oh, uh, that's wow. the other thing you do. So your first thing is you get to get your picture taken, and then you, because uh, you know, Neil Armstrong never got a, uh, there's no pictures of Neil Armstrong on the moon. Did you know that one? Right, because he's taking them all. He took There's all one the in Buzz's visor. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that reflection of Neil Armstrong in the visor is like the only photo of him on the moon because he's taking a picture of the other guy. Alan Bean, have you ever gotten a chance to meet Alan? The fourth no. guy on the moon was, a, was an artist as well. Yeah. And he took that little image and painted Neil Armstrong on the moon. It's one of the paintings that Alan did. But that's, that adds to the legend of Neil Armstrong. Right? Truly. Imagine going to the, like we already took a selfie that I said to my son earlier. <laughs> Imagine going to the moon and not getting a picture of yourself. Right. <laughs> you know, what do we, but it, that wasn't his that's, concern. Yeah. He'll take the picture of the other guy. Anyway, we learned our lesson. You get your picture taken the first thing. As soon as you're going to go up to the window, <laughs> get your picture taken. But I, I remember looking at that hatch and wondering, like, what's on the other side? That's the door to space. Right. And then it's done, and they, we open the hatch, and Jim Newman, my spacewalking buddy, Went out first. He was the experienced guy. This was his fourth flight. He'd done a bunch of spacewalks already. And he went out there, made sure the coast was clear, set up all the, the tethers. And he goes, all right, Mike, ready for you to come out. And I remember stick, I stuck my head out of the airlock. So this is a lot. Looking through the window is really cool. Yeah, right? That was the yeah. first thing I wanted to do because you're inside the spaceship. But now you, you get outside. It's like now you're out in a playground. The whole sky opens up. And in this case, the whole universe kind of opens up to you. And 
He's up kind of where this guy is up there. There's a wow. who shark. is that up there? Shark. shark. Okay, so he's up kind of where yeah. shark. A little. There's another guy up oh, there. Oh yeah, that, Han, uh, Han Solo. Han Solo's Carbonate. over yeah. there. So he's kind of where Han Solo is. Actually, okay. can't see that, folks. But anyway, I kind of I stick my head out, and he's on a handrail, and he's got his visor up, so I can see his face, and he's just like smiling. Like, Check this out. And behind his head is Africa. So, so I'm at, I, I, I look up and I see his head, and behind him is Africa. And the thought is, how am I ever going to get anything done out here? Right. Because it's just so spectacular. And then I looked in front of me, and there was a handrail and one of the vent tubes, which just like the ones we had in the pool. Yeah. And I said, I, all right, I know what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to stick to this. This I understand. And I was okay. I was so well trained at the task. Went up to the window, smiled, got my picture taken, went around a payload bay, and went to work. So uh, the first the first shot was overwhelming, but I was for me it was more all right. I, I you know constant for the first spacewalk, I was well trained and kind of concentrated on the work. Took some glimpses here and there. My second spacewalk was much more comfortable, and that's when I really had a chance to look. And uh, my uh, my first it was a couple minutes of a break I had, and my, my first reaction to seeing Earth was. This is so beautiful, we're not supposed to look at this. And I actually turned my head. No, this wow. is more beautiful human eyes. And I turned my head, and I'm like, you idiot, of course you're supposed to look. And I, I looked this, uh, I said, take another look. That's really moving. I looked, at, I looked a second time, and I started to get a bit emotional. Yeah. And I started feeling, feeling <gasps> a tear develop. Now, remember what happened to our friend? Chris Hadfield. Chris Hadfield. Oh, good God. Had a problem with the drink bag, right? <clears throat> yeah. And, and we had a new drink bag at that time. In the first couple flights before mine, they introduced it with a different bite valve, like a camelback valve, uh -huh. you know what I was saying? And uh, it was burping out water with a different pressure. And, and what happened to Chris, as you know, it, it starts to crawl. It got us. into his, it, what it, it mixed with his antifog, it floats around. It mixed with the antifog in his visor and then got into his eye. Right, the antifog so was that was soapy, behind it. Yeah. Right, so it was soapy water that got in his eye. So I, now I start to tear up and I'm, I'm horrified that. If this same thing happens to me, there's gonna there's gonna be questions asked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tell the truth that I was crying right. during my spacewalk. So I got my myself under control and looked a third time, and the thought was, you know, this is this is like a view from heaven. It's a heavenly view. And then I thought, nah, it's more beautiful than that. This is this is what paradise. This is what heaven must look like. And it changed my perception of where we are now. I I, is, I can't imagine any place more beautiful than where we are on this planet, right? Right now, being here, being here on Earth, it's that beautiful. I, I can't imagine any place anywhere more beautiful than where we are. It, there's a cultural name for this experience yeah. called the overview effect. Yeah. Is that is that a real effect to you? Think? I, get, I think so. I think it affects people in different ways. It's not. I, I think the only thing I'm not. I think it's a way maybe to classify it, but mm -hmm. I think everyone has their own interpretation or their own experience of yeah. it. Um, for me, it's just I, I, I even coming here today. I, I was in Monterey earlier and. Uh, drove through San Jose and then here in the and you go through the countryside. It wasn't along the you know along the coastline here is one of the most beautiful it's places one of my favorite in the drives. world, right? Yeah. But I took the inner route. It goes to like 101 and mm -hmm. something else. And even that, the farmland and the smells of yeah. the plant, the garlic and through the garlic, Gilroy, yep, Gilroy. Gilroy. You smell mm -hmm. that stuff. And it's just it's so wonderful. I think the experience I had in space, where you don't you can't really smell anything other than yourself, yeah, you know, <laughs> or you know your friends, which you know which we do here as well. But you don't you don't have the same smells and the beauty or the wind. There's no weather. We're missing a lot of stuff in space. Yeah. You can see the the beauty of the planet is like well that's, you know, that that's where all the action is. That's where the beauty is. That's where life is. That's where everything we know is. And um, now I, I think I engage the world differently. I, I I think I appreciate that stuff more. So I, I, people react to it in different ways. That and also my my sense of home changed in space. Like when, when I was a kid, I grew up just outside of Queens in a town called Franklin Square and that was my that was my world and I went to college and started working and, I, and maybe traveled around a little bit more outside of New York and I considered myself to be a New Yorker and then was as an astronaut I was an American I think I identified I'm from the United States that's yeah. my country that's where I'm from but now I, I, I when I think of home I think of earth yeah I do and after going around it so because it hit me that every everybody's down here well down there when I'm looking at it yeah. that's where my family is my friends where well, you and all of our friends here were, uh, everybody is down there in that one place. So everyone in the whole world, wherever you live, all of us share the same place, the same home. And uh, that, that's, so it changed my, my, my sense of where I'm from. I, I'm from planet Earth. 
So those are some of the things that changed for me. And I, maybe that's an overview effect. I, yeah. I think it's kind of lumped together, but I think everyone has their own interpretation of it. When you're, that's why you got to go up there, man. I'm dying I can't to. wait to see what you're going to say <laughs> when that day comes. When you're up there, I, I, how far were you rela in relation to the ISS? Were so you we're 100 away? miles higher, yeah. So we oh, had uh, so, so you, Hubble was as high as they could get the shuttle. They yeah. wanted, since being a telescope, they wanted as far away as they could. There were a couple sure. emergencies we couldn't recover from, like some engine failures uh, that... Because we were so high, we couldn't recover if from something. If they certain, had like, happened. Yeah. So, because mm -hmm. I was looking through the checklist, you know, like one of the first things, like, hey, what happened to, you know, the Ohm's engine fail for it? And they're like, ah, oh, you know, worry about that. You know, worry about that one. <laughs> there was no way to recover from a couple of those things. So, <laughs> See we were. the up, speech in the back yeah, pocket. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, don't worry about it. No, you don't need to worry about that. But uh, so we were 100 miles higher, which gave us um, a view of the, more of the planet. That's we didn't what get I was to wondering. see as much detail, but you, we got to see. Um, is it, does it we, fill, we, we, does it fill It your still frame? fills your field of view. You get okay. to see the curvature. So it looks like a gigantic ball. Got it. But it still <clears throat> fills your, your field of view. We did have, uh, toward the end, we had a, a more of an elliptical orbit that took us down to the lower orbit. Like we had, um, we want, they wanted to lower our, our, um, our orbit a bit to get us out of the, the totally being in the higher orbit. There's more debris up there. Right. And this was after Columbia. This is on my second flight, for example where um, it was, we had the Columbia accident. I was on Columbia right before that accident. The next flight was that accident. Um, and so we were concerned about debris, not only on launch, which took Columbia out, but also on, on orbit. You can hit yeah. something and you, you get damaged that way too. So the, the higher orbits have more debris because it, that stuff's at a higher energy. It stays there longer. Got it. Even though it'll go through the lower orbits eventually, there's, there's more of it up there. So they, we lowered uh, like half of our orbit, got more, or some of it, we went elliptical and we were closer. And that was kind of cool because you kind of got both. You got like a closer view and then you're a little bit further away for, for part of the orbit too. <sighs> but that was spectacular to be able to, to see the curve of the planet with, with that view was, was, uh, was really quite, quite spectacular for us. I feel like I'd wonder the same thing. How am I going to get any work done now? Yeah, that was the thing. <laughs> you know, but, but we were so well trained that I was able to do. Yeah.